And this one, the queen's actually dead, which is bad, really bad. And the fourth, do you want to talk again? He farted. We want to get the queen ready to go on the fourth frame. <coughs> Ugh, smoker's working well. Yeah. Okay, I just put our pollen patty on. I left the wax paper on because it's really... Oh. Sorry, you have to do that one more time. Should I probably get the stinger out? It feels like it's in there. Okay, so got stung. Kind of sucks. Um, clear path, people! Okay. Good morning everyone. Eric and I are headed to pick up bees today. We were getting the hives prepared out in the bog just this morning and I wanted to give you a quick update on our chickens. We have four broody hens. Actually I think we have five. So we have four that have uh, that are broody and they have eggs under them and we have one in the corner that's going to be hatching out in about a week. Really really excited about that. This will be our first time ever with our own chickens hatching out chicks. So we're gonna head out to pick up our three bee packages. Okay guys, we made it back to the cabin with our three bee packages and we had to drive about an hour and a half to get these, maybe a little under that, and these were shipped on an airplane to Alaska. So we're gonna get these out into the bog and we're gonna install them today. Probably an easier way to do this, but I'm just gonna walk it out there. All right, we finally made it out to the bog and we are going to be installing the three packages today. I was just gonna do a quick rundown of what we've got going on here, what kind of bees we have, and just all the supplies we have. So we got three package bees and they are improved Russian stock. So they're a Russian type of honeybee and we really liked those last year. They're a little bit hardier and more appropriate for our climate. You definitely keep other kinds of bees, but we were really fond of this kind last year, so we went ahead and went with the same variety. We have three different hives, and they're all ready for each of, you know, to get their each a package of their own. We're using polystyrene hives, which it's like a thick styrofoam, and I know it seems kind of odd, but it's actually used a lot in other countries, and it's pretty popular here in Alaska. It works very well for these bees in the cold and the heat and most people are, are successfully overwintering them with these. You can also use the wooden boxes too, but I believe those folks have to insulate them in the winter. So we did this last year, we learned quite a bit and we are more prepared this time around. We have a few different things in this little tray here. We have some of our food for the bees. So we have sugar water, which is a one to one ratio right now. Um, you know, one part water, one part sugar, and that's because that's just what they need right at this time of the season. We're also going to have pollen available for the bees and it's just in this patty form. That's because they don't have pollen available to them right now. So we're also doing that. I have a few things, scissors. I have, I call this my hive tool. It's, you know, a little paint scraper, but that's what I use. And then we have Eric's Leatherman. We're gonna be using the pliers today. We also have a smoker. I use this guy. I mean, I don't use it all the time. A lot of the times 
I'm not wearing a jacket. So I feel pretty comfortable working with our bees pretty carefully and closely. Um, we've had very little issues with that. And generally we just find the smokers enough. So that's just my personal preference. Today they're obviously jazzy. Um, we want to just get them in there. I don't really want to get stung, so I am wearing this outfit. Um, we've got the jacket with the veil. We're also going to have the smoker. And what the smoke does is it prevents them from, it kind of disorients them. So they have signals that they're sending to each other, you know, communication, and it makes it so they can't do that as well. So it just kind of has a calming effect. We've also got some extra wood for our smoker because it burns through pretty quickly. And we have a staple gun. There's a few different ways that you can asphyxiate the queen in the hive, and I'll show you guys that when we get there, but we have found that we like stapling the little box she comes in to one of the frames. It worked great last year, so that's again what we're doing. And we also have some marshmallows, a candy marshmallow, but I left them back at the cabin, so I'm gonna have to go run back and get those. We'll go over that too once we're installing them. And lastly, just some stuff we have today because it is semi-misty, it's clearing up. I have this lid on top of the bees so they don't get wet. And I have another little plastic lid that I'm gonna use to place over the packages once I pull out their feeder can. Eric helped me get one of these packages disconnected from the other two. And I just wanted to mention that this is a four pound package of bees. It has worker bees and one queen in it. So they're all female bees. And the other thing I forgot to mention is gloves. So I'm going to be using gloves today. I'm actually really not a big fan of them because they're huge on me. And I liked using the nitrile gloves when I had them, but I don't have any left. There's probably a major shortage of them right now. And so I'm just going to stick with these guys for now. One of the first things I have to do is shake the bees down. So right now they're clustered at the top with the queen and on the food can, but that's going to be kind of an issue when I'm pulling them out. So you can tap them, you can shake them, you can do a quick jolt and that's gonna make them mad I mean it really is but that's the way to do it that I like to do it and now I'm gonna take that can out which is their feeder can we're just gonna try to not squish as many bees as we possibly can just gonna put that over real quickly and these bees are eating that sugar syrup in there so we can put them aside right now in fact I'll just turn their can upside down it only has holes on the bottom my next mission is going after the queen and she's hooked on here. They're gonna come out a little bit right now. This part kind of takes a little while cause it's really wedged in here and they don't really like when you mess with the queen, obviously. That's who they're trying to protect in there. I made the mistake of not getting my little bee brush out first. So this is the queen box. And what I'm gonna do is just scoop them. There we go, we got that hole covered. It's pretty hard not to hurt a bee. I mean, I'm being as careful as I can, but definitely one or two of them may get hurt. Um, I'm gonna move this package off to this side. I'm gonna get my marshmallow. The best way I've found working with bees is to be quick with your movements, but gentle, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we got the cork out and I've got my finger over it. I'm gonna try to like simultaneously shove a marshmallow in there. Eric was the one who did this last time. And so the reason I'm shoving a marshmallow in there is in case they haven't been with the queen long enough. This is not their original queen. So they need to get used to her smell. You put a marshmallow in and the bees will actually chew it out over the next few hours. And at that point, they'll be fine to be reunited, or I guess not reunited, but be together with the queen. I have already got the inside set up the way we wanted it. There's my bee brush. So for all four hives, I'm gonna be putting the queen in on the fourth frame. Um, when I come back in a day or two, I'll be able to tell if she is in here, you know, and hasn't flown away. That shouldn't happen, um, but that's why I do it on this fourth frame and all of them. And we also stagger it a little bit off of where they're going to be fed. Because what can happen is that sugar syrup can drip down on them and get them wet. And we don't want that. So that's why we're just going partially in, but not all the way to the middle. And that got pretty well, so I'm just gonna leave that one 
there and that's so she stays there we don't want her to fall uh, she we have the screen facing in between the middle and that's so the bees can still take care of her if I put it facing this way it would be flush with another foundation and they wouldn't be able to take care of her um, so that part's crucial and I'm just gonna give her a quick look see she looks good the girls are taking care of her and we are going to put these guys in now she's wedged into place and we'll fit this frame back in here we have 10 frames in this box and we're using all mediums that's just the way we are set up um, a lot of it was to do with weight we wanted you know less weight so when you use the deep frames they're heavier with honey and they're just heavier in general and we wanted mediums for both the body and for their supers because that makes it just easier for us all around to have the same size and so I'm trying to squish all the frames back together because they like a certain spacing in between their foundation um, and I've just read and that's what we did last year it's just better to squish all their frames back together it's the way we've always done it so we're ready to rock we've got our queen bee in there with two worker bees something new we're doing this year is putting a body on here to act as a chute to get the rest of the bees in there last time I had some of them fall off around and we didn't have snow last year I don't want them to land on the snow or the water or anything like that and get too cold and not be able to make it back into the hive it's also a little bit warmer than last year which is really nice so this part is probably the scariest of all the parts but we're just gonna try to do it fast You just kind of want to shake them out, not super violently, but we basically have to get them all out, or most of them out. Eric just reminded me that we did this last year, but we forgot, I forgot this time. Um, we cut these last time to help the bees get out. <laughs> So to me, one of the most difficult things about learning to work with them is not not being afraid of them. Um, you get over that really quick, but just not hurting them because we obviously want them to live, but installation day is always hard because they're not motivated to just stay right on top of the queen. So they kind of go everywhere and it makes it really difficult. Okay, that may be about as best as I can do. Again, my goal is just try to get them all in there, or at least flying, because we're gonna lose quite a few at this point. Um, I don't want them landing on the ground. I don't want them flying off, um, which they really shouldn't do because they smell that queen. So they're gonna go, pretty much they're gonna go right here. So I'm just gonna put this aside now. I may try to get some more off there, but right now I just, I can't. I went ahead and cut the other side and I'm pretty happy with this. There's a lot more of them doing really well this year than last year. I'm just gonna keep going with this hive. I'll show you guys what we're doing. I have to pull this off. I have to place the inner cover face down. We're gonna be putting a pollen patty actually on top of those frames. And I should have probably done that first, but I'm gonna try to do that. And then I'm gonna put their sugar water on top of this and then we'll put this medium box on and then the top on. I don't quite know how I'm going to do this, but I am going to need to get this off and put this one on top in there, so I guess I'm going to try to just wing it. We've got the inner cover on and the top box. I heard a few crunches, unfortunately, so I'm going to think about how to do that next time a little better. This is their mason jar feeder and what we're gonna do is flip it upside down it's pretty full so sometimes it's good to do that first off of them so you don't get too much coming out at once but this one's perfect and we've got it all lined up already just gonna place that right over there and the rest of these guys I'm gonna sweep in and just let them do their thing and go into the hive naturally Okay, this is pretty typical, not going as planned, but um, they're, this is what they do. They're just everywhere, and this is not normal for their behavior. I mean, it's beha normal for their behavior right now, 
um, because of the circumstances, but it's really hard for Eric to film while we're doing this. This is the package that I just am going to leave right in the front to the side so they know, hopefully, they'll find their way in there. That worked pretty well last time too. So these ones are all done and completely set up. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't strapped them down, which I'm not going to be doing today. We don't have any wind in the forecast, so I'm not worried about them blowing away at the moment. We're moving on to the second hive. I think that went well-ish. I'm going to be cutting the screen off the second one. I forgot about that. That actually makes a huge difference. And I'm going to put on the pollen patty before I shake the bees. Those are my two mistakes that I made. Um, so I'm going to try to correct that for next time. Let's move on to the middle hive. Some of these bees may in fact cross over to other hives. Um, that's just going to be the case right now. And the easiest way to get bees off of something if you don't want them there, the brush works, but you can't really roll them. You have to kind of like flick them because I just like to tap it. And that's because they go flying. So that works the best for me. We want to get the queen ready to go on the fourth frame. So I'll pull out one of these frames, make some space in here. Okay, we're just going to do a one pop. Okay, flip the feeder upside down, get that down. And we're just going to try and get that queen out right away. Had some troubles with that last one. I'm going to try and knock those guys in there if I can. Oh, this is working way better. Okay, so this really sucks. I guess this happens. Um, last year, one of our packages, the feeder was upside down, so that hive wasn't really doing very well. And this one, the queen's actually dead, which is bad, really bad. Okay, so, but what that probably means is we'll just need to get a new queen from the, um, the apiaris that we got our bees from. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure what I need to do is I'm going to install her as normal and we're going to put all the bees in and then we're going to have to just like get our queen hopefully and do that. It's not good to leave them in their package for you know long periods so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put them in the hive. They can still smell her so they still want to be on this. So that's kind of a bummer too because the queen you know like I was talking about in the other one they're familiar with her scent so I think when we add a new queen she will need to be separated from them for a few days. I don't think I can do the whole marshmallow thing. That only keeps them separate for a few hours. And what can happen is the worker, the worker bees can kill the queen if they don't accept her or if she's unfamiliar. Um, so we'll have to see how that one goes. I'm just gonna keep going along, get our pollen patty on here before we put the rest of the bees on there. I just put the pollen patty on and I left some of the wax paper because it's very soft right now. We had it in our house warming up and it'll just slip right through. So um, through, through the frames to the bottom and I don't want that to happen. So I've got this wax paper on and I'll pull it out later. Um, but this way they can access it on the top. Got our frames squished together even though there's no clean. So we're going to see how this goes. I'm still going to do the shoot. Everything so far is going pretty decent. Um, again, we're gonna need to get a new queen for this package. Uh, and I'm gonna move on to this third one. Our third queen is alive and kicking. She is more than anxious to get out of there. The first marshmallow I put in was a little too narrow and it went through all the way. Um, the worker bees are really doing a great job tending to her. So she's good. So we're gonna get her all set up.
Okay, we got that third one done. And it may seem like I'm being overly aggressive, but that is, that's the way I want to get them out. Because the thing is, is that if I leave too many in there. Okay, so got stung. Kind of sucks. Um, must have crawled up my shirt somehow. I thought I was tucked in well, but apparently not well enough because we found one earlier here in the veil. And it's, this one's still got me, still got me pretty good. So I'm gonna try to retrieve the stinger. All right, so we made the decision to keep working because the bees are everywhere and we figured trying to get that one out will just let more in. There's also one on my neck as we're speaking, so I'm gonna try to hurry. There we go. So we totally finished. I'm gonna get this jacket off because like I said, there's one on my neck and there's one, the stinger's still in there, I can tell because it doesn't feel good on my stomach. So we will join you guys back in just one second. All right, we got the, my jacket off and assessed the sting area and it is raining now. So we are going to clean up, uh, pick up out here and then we're gonna come back out here when it's not raining and talk a little bit more about the bees. And at that point, we will also check on the queens and probably be putting in a new queen for this hive. All right, that is our new queen. It has been two days since we installed our three hives and this is the replacement queen for the middle hive, so we're gonna get her in there today and we're gonna be checking on the other two hives. So we picked up that queen late last night and that's why we don't have her installed already. It's nice and early this morning. Um, I think we're in the 40 degrees already. So the bees are not super active right at the moment. That's the cluster, the queen's over here. So I don't really know what's going on with this hive here, but um, I'm just gonna get the new, the new queen in here you know, when I picked up the bee um, last night, the you know supplier that we get them from, he said to just make sure that there's not already a queen in here. And I don't, I didn't think there was, but the fact that there's another, the fact that they're clustered somewhere else maybe indicates that there may already be another queen. So I'm gonna just double check to see if maybe there's a queen. We came out and checked on this hive yesterday and there was actually, they were really, really loud. They were like roaring, just this hive. And that kind of confirmed the fact that I thought there was no queen, but I don't know, I'm kind of looking at what they're doing and they're flapping their wings. So I'm wondering if there is a queen in here. So we're just gonna take a peek before we put that new one in here. What happens is if I put a new one in here and they already have one, so they're going to kill that one most likely, um, or just not take care of her and she won't live. So usually when looking for the queen, you can start generally on the frame you think she is but I'm actually starting on an outside frame because I just don't really even know if there's a queen so I've got four frames to check she was on that first one that I could see this one's a lot of activity We have one more frame to check and I, I don't I don't think they have a queen. It's a little strange that the cluster's away from the queen, but I, I really don't have anything to go off of. This is my first experience with this, but they're pretty calm right now. I'm not sure what's going on if they have one. We haven't seen any eggs and we haven't seen the queen yet. So I'm just gonna push these back together. I really don't think there's a queen in there. They're, it's really thick, so I'm having a hard time telling exactly, but I just don't think there's one in there, so we are going to put in the new queen. So this is the old one, and the queen's in the same spot um, since she's not alive, and there's no one tending to her at all, so they must, you know, know that she's not alive. So they may be accepting of her right away. Um, they may not. They may try to act like they're going to kill her, so we're just going to kind of see what happens. And we're not going to be putting a marshmallow, replacing that cork with a marshmallow because they need to get used to her first. So I normally wouldn't divide up the cluster, but I don't want her to be too cold. And again, this is just my first time with this happening, so I don't really know what to do correctly here. In this situation, we're just assuming that there's not another queen. I'm going to slowly push everything back together. I find if we go really slow, not only are the bees less likely to come out and sting me, but they can get out of the way and you don't really smush that many or smush any at all. I'd say that went pretty smoothly. Um, we're going to check back on this hive in maybe two days, maybe on the third day actually, and 
release that queen out of the cage. Okay, we're gonna jump into this other hive. This cluster looks like they're right under the middle. So we actually found the queen on the cage and that's just why it's a really good idea to be really careful with everyone because we don't really know where the queen is. Usually she's on a frame running around laying eggs but she was actually encircling this and I saw it when Eric went to light the smoker again um, and she's now back in, in the cage. So I'm gonna put her back and we'll just pull this out in a few days. That's the queen right there on the end with a darker butt and longer. All right, we finished up with that hive, so we have one more hive to check. So Eric found the queen jamming away right there on this frame. She's moved, she hopped over three frames. She's really clearing some ground. And she, when I put this queen in here, she was like a firecracker in her little queen cage. She was bouncing around, so. This hive's doing well, they seem really calm, and the queen's in there. So we're just gonna put everything back. And it's really interesting, because like I said, we put the queen cage here, and she was all the way over there. Um, quite a bit a ways away from where we first put her. Which is interesting, because that other hive, the queen was still in the cage. We got all those out of the way. It's always kind of sketchy when you're out here at the beginning, because they just fly around and they, I don't want to squish any of them. I think that's the goal of beekeeping, is to not squish your own bees. So we are done for the day out here. Again, I'm gonna wait three days before I come back out and check that middle hive. That middle hive has gotten really loud too since I did that, so I'm hoping I did the right thing. <laughs> I'm not sure if I did. Um, again, we're pretty new to beekeeping. This is just our second year. And you know, we're honestly, we're doing it for the honey, but we're also doing it for the experience. It's something I've really wanted to do for a few years several years actually researched it and you know we actually started it here in Alaska extremely challenging climate to do this in and even though they're the right you know a good type of bees for here and we've got them in the polystyrene hives it's still extremely challenging and even some of the best people here are you know not 100% success rate overwintering them and that's our goal with keeping them is to have them overwinter so we're not buying new package bees every year that's not really financially affordable for us and also I mean they get they get bigger and stronger and healthier and that's just the the game plan right you want them to survive the winter so they can go on the next year and the next year and things like that and hopefully we can get a little honey in the process too I'm not sure how this year will go. Um, I'm planning on really focusing on them. You know, last year we came out here probably every week to every other week and I did notice some things. I didn't quite know what to do and I wanted to take more of an approach where I let the bees take care of themselves and I feel like I'm not going to do that as much. Um, I know they know what they're doing and they're not like a traditional livestock animal where they stay on your property, you know, they go off a few miles, but I really want to hone in on what I need to do to be successful and to help them be successful too. So that's it for today and we're gonna get all this stuff cleaned up and we will keep you guys updated on the bees. I'll bring them over. Yeah.